In this video, we're going to talk about Hedge's new version of PostLab for managing all types of project files, not just Final Cut Pro, but a bunch of creative workflows. Real quick, you're watching VP Land. Special thanks to our sponsors, Blackmagic and Atomos, for helping make our NAB coverage possible. And now back to the video. All right, here we are with Paul from Hedge. Paul, good to see you. Thanks for having me. Uh, so yeah, what do we got going on new in uh, PostLab? Oh, lots. So yes. the current PostLab, it will be called PostLab Classic. We're going to replace completely with a new version called PostLab 2.0. Okay. It's going to happen over the course of the next months for the existing teams. And it's a complete paradigm shift. So the current PostLab is a subscription-based cloud service. We're turning that into a license-based client app that just uses your LucidLink, your Remove, your Suite Storage, or even S3 as a backend. And it's no longer just for Final Cut Pro and Premiere, but it allows you to be on par with the whole creative team. So it supports Motion, Logic, Pro Tools, Avid, Premiere, After Effects, Blender, VFX. Any of those project files? Any. And so that was at the check-in, check-out, lock-in, Functionality. Yeah, and exactly. What else we got here? So it's a, it's a team time machine. All all the versions you work off on a, okay. on a project has a full time machine. You can see who's working on something. So because it's locked, if it's for instance a Blender file, then the Blender file is locked itself. But if it's Final Cut Pro, it's no longer just on the library, but it's actually on the events themselves. So you get event locking as if you have been locking for Avid, but then okay. for Final Cut Pro. How does that work with Final Cut? So if you have the library open, but you someone could else could be accessing the event, or how, how is that? How, yeah, yeah, there is no libraries. <laughs> PostLab can look into, so when you import a library and you have events in it, we can look into the library, we show you the events, and let's say you imported a library and we're on the same PostLab project, I can create a new library and just say, I want those events that you imported, and whoever gets to the event first locks it, and I can still open the events you are locking, so I can still work with those. So we can both have a full set of, let's say our project has 10 events. We can both have a full set of 10 events, where you're working in the ones you're working in, I'm working in the ones I'm working in. And for instance, the others are standard events like SFX or media that the assistant editor is populating and updating all the time. And so then if they update that, that's going to update the other projects? Or yes, you, you can update. reload it and you get a notification. And then you said before, so it's not just uh, LucidLink right now, but you could connect it to a variety of storage options? Yes. Yeah, back, back in the day, uh, basically mid-COVID, LucidLink was the only way to do this properly and everybody was scrambling for ways. It's a different landscape nowadays, so we're opening it up to more platforms. We're certifying a lot of platforms. We're looking at things like Dropbox and Box, although they're still not that good for working with media. So it's mostly about LucidLink, a move, a suite. Those aren't very much the three alternatives. We also have a lot of customers that use Resilio for media syncing or are not working remote at all or just on-prem, and that works too. Okay. And can you explain a little bit more about this pricing change and how the, the pricing is working? Yeah, so currently it's a subscription model with a monthly or yearly pricing. Right, per user and then how much storage you exactly. want. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And that's changing because we no longer provide storage. We no longer need to. We can just change it to what we do with all of our other apps that we have a regular version for around 150 and a pro version for around 250. And that's only for the first year. It's a perpetual license. So after that year, everything will continue working as is. And if you then decide that you want to have new updates, new features, or okay. customer support, then you can renew at a typically half of the price. Okay, so it's more like purchasing an app now. Exactly the same okay. thing. Yeah. yeah. And that's per each license is per for one seat. Yes. So you have a team well, you can have one license with multiple seats too. Okay. I mean, is, I guess, is the seat price the same as purchasing, or is there like a, if you buy the, the license and you need to add more seats is at a different price. Yeah, at some point, volume pricing kicks in. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, as far as like remote workflows and cloud workflows, now where do you see the future going? Because we're still like, this is a very clever way of like moving files, locking files, but you kind of see more of a virtual, like being able to have everything fully in the cloud and not have to kind of bring it to local storage in some fashion or another. Well, what we see a lot is that people are sort of forced right now into either working locally or on-prem mm -hmm. or in the clouds. And once you lock in that decision for that production, then that's what it is. With the new PostLab, we wanted to get rid of that. So we found a way to allow you to just move between local on your own from your local RAID or SSD to shared storage to the cloud with just one click of a button. And you can just decide what works best when. So for instance, we have customers that work solely on-prem, but if they are tight on a deadline, they need to bring in remote collaborators, they can just move to cloud storage, and then it's a remote collaboration. And as soon as they're done, they can just bring it back, and then it's no longer a remote collaboration. So now we think that whole distinction between hybrid and remote will go away pretty soon. 
and that in that example, if they're like, oh, we do, we're on prem, but we need to go to cloud, are they like just copying their data from like a NAS to a Lucid Link or something? Like how sometimes, that work yeah, though? or they either just sync it, or they have all the media in the cloud already, or just proxies. Uh huh. It it really there shouldn't be like every workflow is different, every production is different, so it should be super easy to just move between what works for what. We also still see people sending out hard drives to each other, and sometimes that's just way faster than working with clouds. Uh -huh. But right. often it's not. So yeah, it really depends. Yeah, I am a big fan of PressLab. I used it, but then I brought some other team members on that were PC. Yeah. Couldn't use it as much anymore. Uh, is it their plans to bring it on PC? Very much so. Yeah. As They're a company, we don't want to have vendor lock-ins, and we think an OS lock-in is the same thing. Like if you first were on a Mac and then on a PC, you shouldn't be able to. Re you shouldn't have to rebuy the software. You should be able to just use your existing license. So as soon as we get PostLab working and sort of finessed on the Mac, then we're going to work on the Windows version too. Yeah, Very excited to hear that. Yeah. Uh, and last other update, you also purchased a piece of software that I use all the time, and I'm very happy to hear that. Well, Final Cut Pro Library Manager is now Arctic. So, kind of tell me about that. Yeah, it's actually not a purchase or an acquisition. Yeah. It's it was around for a decade, and the original founders, Vincent and uh, Tim, they yeah, they their lives changed, so they no longer no longer could work on it. And we thought it would be a shame it would go away. The app, like like so many apps, just go to the graveyard because people can't work on it anymore. So we took it on as stewardship, care for the app, we make sure support is done on it, maintenance is done in it, and every money that's spent on it by people goes into a slush fund just for that. So we don't make a profit on it, it's just that we act as a safety net for it. We brought on Chris Hawking of Command Post to help out with the development, and we're also sort of paying back Vincent and Tim for their, all the work they did the last decade, in the coming three years, just to make sure the app stays around, because it has a valid place in the Final Cut Pro industry, you think? Yeah, I use it all the time, and uh, since I switched to Arctic, uh, first time in a long time, it hasn't crashed, so. Well, there you uh, go. Great to, yeah, it's been great to use it. And do you have any plans kind of for future expanding it, or where it might go from uh, on yeah, your stewardship? Yeah, we actually got quite a big feature request list from Vincent, all the stuff they weren't able to work on, and also, well, the Final Cut Pro community is super vocal, so we've been getting many, many emails of people saying, oh, this is awesome, can yeah. you do this, can you do that? Some of it doesn't really have a place in Arctic, but much more in PostLab. So mm. we're going to figure out how to do that, maybe do an integration between the two. Where is, because PostLab is really about collaboration and Arctic is much more about cleaning up and about archiving. Mm. So we're sort of figuring out how to fit those together. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, Bob. I appreciate all the updates. Excited to see what's coming out. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Thank you. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out the rest of our enemy coverage over here at this playlist and hit the subscribe button for more videos like this. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next episode.